Welcome to a New Mexico Focus Web Extra with some great folks here and some great subjects for the week. Let's continue with three more. Sam Bregman, chairman of New Mexico's Democratic Party, says Democratic Senator John Arthur Smith, Smith should join the GOP because his conservative views are not working well for him. The Senate Majority Leader Michael Sanchez ripped into Bregman for meddling in legislative business and also took on unnamed political blogger likely Joe Monahan for blasting Mr. Smith's job's performance. Sam Bregman is apparently enjoying the scuffle, saying it has energized the Democratic Party. Eric Riego, I turn to you. <laughs> this is an interesting situation we have here. It is not unusual for state party chairs to call out anyone in the political process. Who won here? Was it actually no, the, the, the I, blogger? Was it actually? I think that it's here? great. You know, we have in the Democratic Party, we have no discipline. You know, Senator Smith <laughs> is willing to, he can believe whatever he wants, but when he's the one Democrat right. holding up a, a policy that overwhelmingly the public, not just Democrats, but the public concerns, but in particular right. Democrats support, he won't even let his, vote, his colleagues vote on it because he's one guy. That's not democracy. Is this an overall whip crack saying Democrats need to start to think about being Democrats again? Is, is, is he doing I wish. We're not even anywhere near that. We're just saying, yeah. is it right for one guy to hold the whole entire uh, policy hostage and, and out of line with everybody in his party? Sure. Sophie, I, on, the, on the comment about being going to the GOP, unless... I, you know what, I kind of feel like Bregman spoke with the voice that's been in like the back of all these Democrats' heads for so long, and then everybody was like, oh my gosh, did, uh, did he say that out loud? Right. Um, and then there's all this walking back. Um, I appreciate the position that he put Sanchez in, mm -hmm. because I think that it is a very difficult spot. Mm -hmm. But I also do, I do think that there's a really important conversation that is happening now, mm -hmm. and it needs to continue. Sure. Your sense of that, Whitney? as well is, is, again, John Dendahl, he was not hesitant on these things back no, when. No, and that's exactly right. I mean, right. you know, par uh, parties exist for, for the politics of it, and our legislators are mm -hmm. elected to actually take care of their constituents. And all of the, I mean, I think about like Janice Arnold Jones with all the work that she did on um, on access and right. openness in government. Right. You know, John Arthur Smith is recognized and acknowledged for the work that he's done on finance. I'm amazed at how quickly the Democrats want to just jettison him because he talks about fiscal responsibility. Um, I, but I just, it's John Arthur Smith. And I don't also think it's just one person. There's not just one person that holds up an entire process. Mm -hmm. That's not that. That's not. He's he has that chairmanship for a reason. He has the support that he has for a reason. He has the support of his colleagues. Clearly, has the support of Michael Sanchez. Because he was elected. He's not. A, he's not. He's not a, a standalone guy. He was elected he's by the Republicans in a coalition. That's why he's the chairman of finance. Well, I don't know so about he's, that. He's been a good Republican. <laughs> so I agree with you. He's doing a great job as a Republican. Sam Bregman, look what he started. I love this. <laughs> Susan Riedel, former Chief's Deputy District Attorney. Under this governor, Susana Martinez, when she was DA in Las Cruces, she has announced last week she is seeking the Republican nomination for Attorney General. Sophie, she worked as a prosecutor for 25 years. Opposition when the governor appointed her to the Public Defender Commission last year, that might hurt her chances, possibly. Do you remember that whole dust up? That was I, interesting. I do. I think it's important to remember Ooh. when you look at the Attorney General's office, and we see this in, in our firm, that the AG's office does a whole lot more than just the work of a prosecutor. There's right. a great deal of uh, consumer protection, mm -hmm. government affairs, civil litigation, et cetera. I want to see from all of the candidates for that position uh, an understanding of the full portfolio of what the AG's office does, because that office is too important important to mm -hmm. our seniors, our homeowners facing foreclosure. There's a whole range of constituencies that need to be served. I don't want to just hear prosecutor, prosecutor, prosecutor. Very glad you said that. A lot of folks don't realize that. They really are at ground level in that office for the consumer. Super important. So, this is their job. Absolutely. Super important. Eric, your thoughts you know, I got to say, um, I don't know if the governor has coattails with the, with the, sort of the collegial uh, relationship they have, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. Hector Balderas is really, I think, going to be a formidable candidate. He's he's done the prosecutorial work in his early in his legal career, but he's also been a huge advocate of transparency and accountability, but also he gets the consumer pieces. I think the most important role of the AG is to be the, the protector of consumers and... I'm going to steal up. We just rang the bell, but I, while you're here, I just got to ask you, can Mr. Balderas raise the money to be competitive, because we can only assume that she's going to be able to raise a lot of money being the beneficiary of the Martinez uh, apparatchik, so to speak. Is that going to be an issue for Mr. Baldwin? I, I think he did very well early okay. on when he ran for Senate uh, until it became clear that the establishment was sort of really uh, 
uh, helping uh, Senator Heinrich, and, and but I, he, he raised a, fo a okay. formal amount. I think he's going to be fine. Okay. What do you think of the chances of the, of the candidate on the GOP side? Oh, I, you know, I think she's a fine candidate. Mm -hmm. I, um, if I was a betting person, I'd be 100%, you know, behind Hector Balderas. I think he's got a strong connection to the people. I think he's done an incredible job. Partisan politics aside, mm -hmm. he's done an incredible job um, in his position right there. I, I, I don't see anybody coming against him that would be able mm -hmm. to defeat him from the Republican side. There you go. I'll Conservative Congressman Stephen Pierce. That's okay. <laughs> has received a lot of criticism lately for his chapter in his memoir that explains, quote, biblically, the wifely submission that he and his wife practice. The statements have sent the internet into a kooky frenzy, some websites claiming this is another addition to the war on women. Pierce said the Bible verses were taken wildly out of context and misrepresented his feelings in the family. And Whitney, I gotta start with you. You know the man a little bit. I, I, I did read the rebuttal, so to speak, and it seemed to my eyes that that was plucked a bit out of context there. I'm, I'm not a, but you know what I mean? It just something didn't seem quite right when I read both when together. When you read both together. Yeah. Well, you know, ha having not read the book, it's hard, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't like to take a position and say, oh, it was taken out of context or it wasn't. Mm -hmm. All I can say is I just don't understand why, <laughs> uh, you know, in this election year, year and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Republicans already have a hard time with our image. You don't know why it was of, there in the first place? Yeah, why, okay. why, mm -hmm. why would he uh, mm -hmm. write and publish a book that would address this issue that is so controversial? Mm -hmm. And again, it's not, it's not, it's not going to affect his election at all down south. I mean, his constituents sure. know who he is. Um, but on the broader spectrum of Republicans talking about women's issues, and this this what this is, um, it, it's just, it doesn't help. I mean, I got on, on my Twitter account and Googled Steve Pierce right after this happened, and oh my gosh, you yeah. know, talk about viral. It's and and that's what yeah. I cringe about. It's like, I don't, you know, you can try to tackle this subject as, a, as an older <coughs> Anglo male, um, but I, you know, 90% chance that it's just going to blow up. Mm -hmm. Exactly, your thoughts. I, you know, I, I couldn't agree more, and I just, uh, one of the things that really I thought, this is a book, this isn't an off-the-cuff remark, this isn't an interview, um, saying my book is taken out of context, you and your editor and your family and the people who you forced to read it and then you thank and the acknowledgments, acknowledgments for their patience, mm -hmm. all had a chance to vet That's that, right. and nobody right. said, hey, I wait agree. a minute, <laughs> we should leave this chapter out. I, I think maybe he thought no one was going to read the book, but then why did you put it out there? I don't know. Right, right. it's a good point. Eric. My, my <laughs> beliefs were taken out of context, I think is what he meant to say. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I would not want to be a, a Republican woman having to in any way defend this by, you know, faith-based mm -hmm. or anything else because, I, you know, the times are changing. And i got to say, Rocky uh, Lada, who's a very strong candidate down south, mm -hmm. I think has got to be very, very happy about this, and I think suddenly this seat is very much in play. It's a small opening of some sort, you would have to think, but if he, it, again, same question as the last uh, issue. Can Rocky raise the money to make an issue of it? I mean, it's... Well, I think she you know, just, I think she is right on the radar screen now. She's going to get a lot of help. Nobody raises it on their own. Okay. You get on the radar screen, you'll get some help to raise the money. There you go. Mm -hmm. Last subject, after taking a fall down the stairs, a Silver City woman treated a painful bruise on her toe with holy dirt from the sanctuary at Chimayo. After unwrapping the bandages, she claims one of her toes is now sporting the image of Jesus. Eric, I, I love that place she was at, you, but here's what happens to me. I always hit my head on the low opening when you try to get out of there, and I get a lump, and when I look in the mirror, I don't see Jesus, but it, it hurts. And I love that place, but these stories are always fun, aren't they? I've had, had a bump that looked story? a little bit like Gandhi before, but <laughs> it reminds me of a story when, when I was growing up, my, my, my grandmother made a tortilla, and it was kind of, it could have been, you know, could have been Jim Morrison or, or Jesus, <laughs> somebody there. My cousin ate the tortilla, it was a big family to do, and so, uh, Sounds like a good short film. I may have to talk to you about that. That's interesting. So, you know, uh, the, we always sort of joke about the, the Jesus showing up on something. Mm -hmm. what, what I love as a New Mexican is that there suddenly is an opportunity to talk about the Santuario. Yeah. Um, and so there is this sense of humor, of course, the sense of humor about what happened with Paulo Osuna. But, mm -hmm. but then there is this reminder to the rest of the world that the Lords of the New World is here in New Mexico and you can come visit it. Nice, exactly. So yeah, I think I kind of agree with Sophie a little uh -huh. bit. Uh, you know, a comical on the surface, but if you visited the site, you know how incredibly serious, right. and I don't yeah. mean to be a wet blanket That's on right. this, but you know, mm -hmm. people go there with very serious mm -hmm. health conditions, praying for healing, and they go in with hope and, you know, whatever um, manifested to, to her uh, sure. that she believed that she was healed. You know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a serious site and it's a serious place. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I hate to have the story kind of, you know. 
I, hear, I, I agree with you. It's hard to put into words, isn't it? It, it is. It's a very special place it that It is, way. and yeah. it, you know, that's why I said it's like, while well, some people might find it comical or right. out of the ordinary, right. there's a lot of people. Well, if it wasn't about a, a toe, I think it'd be easy to take it. So there are exactly. people there who've gone there for cancer and stuff. That's but, right. But, uh, you know, pictures of a toe, which were very nice pictures, but I got to say, we got to, you know, I, I, you got to be a little more lighthearted on this one, I think. Yeah. So. There you go. <laughs> Thank you all for your time on this Web Extra. We'll see you next week.